Hey everyone, this is Charles. Welcome back to the channel. In this week's video, I want to explore a topic from an ethical hacking training that I just wrapped up production on, giving you a brief introduction to bash scripting. A bash script is simply a plain text file containing a series of commands that we might typically enter ourselves manually into a terminal. Let's jump in and take a look at an example of this. If you think of a script for a movie or a television show and what the purpose of those scripts are, they're used to communicate to the actors exactly what they should be doing and saying. And this is essentially the same concept with any sort of computer scripting. We're simply telling the system what we want it to do. When we talk about bash scripting, this is very simply a plain text file that contains a script, or in other words, a list of commands. Anything we can run in our command line here in the terminal, then we can run in a script in that manner. So first, we should explain what exactly is Bash. Bash stands for Born Again Shell. So Bash is simply a type of shell that we can run inside of Linux. It's a software with the ability to interpret and execute commands that we type into our terminal. So the terminal is the actual GUI window that we see here on the screen that will accept commands and show us outputs. When we save a bash script, we typically add the .sh file extension to the end of that file name. Now in truth, Linux is what we call an extensionless system. So if you think about installers in Windows or Mac OS, these end with certain file extensions. In Mac, that extension is .dmg. With Windows, it's .exe. If you've ever dropped a Windows installer file into Mac, then you know that won't work. If you change that file extension to something else in Windows, if you change a .exe file to a different extension, that doesn't work. Windows gets confused. It doesn't know what to do with that file. Now, Linux, on the other hand, it doesn't really matter what the extension is because Linux looks inside of the file in order to determine what the file type is. However, these extensions help us as humans to easily identify certain file types. So that's the main reason that we see this conventionally still used inside of Linux. That's why we traditionally do put the .sh extension onto the end of bash script files. So let's start simple here. And we're going to use some commands to create a text file directly here from our terminal. So let's start by saying nano, and I'm going to call this file hello.sh, and I'm going to hit enter. And that will, of course, open our nano file editor. The very first thing that we want to do when we're doing bash scripting is we want to start with what's called a shebang. This is a hash and an exclamation point together. And that's what that looks like, a hash and an exclamation point. We follow that with the forward slash bin forward slash bash directory. This is the file location of our bash shell. Remember bash is one type of shell that's available in Linux and we do have a choice of multiple shells. So this tells our system that we want to run this using the bash shell. One other thing we can do inside of a bash script is to create comments. I'm going to hit enter and go down to a new line and we might create comments inside of all kinds of things, including script files. If you're familiar with even things like HTML or other types of coding, there are ways to create comments in there. And we do that with a hash symbol. This is something that's optional, but something that will also help us identify what a particular script is doing, especially if we have a really long script with multiple functions inside and we are trying to go back later and figure out exactly what's going on here. So we can use our hash sign and then we can give that a comment, whatever we'd like. Maybe something like this is a simple bash script. I'll hit enter to create a new line. And now I can actually begin to create commands that I want to be executed. So I'm going to start really simple by using the command echo. Echo tells our system to display a string or a line of text inside the output. And I'm going to set my echo message as hello world, the old classic line that we use in most of our simple beginner programming. And that's it. That's all I'm going to create in this particular bash script. So I'm going to hit control O, which you can see at the bottom tells it to write out or in other words, to save. It asks me the file name. I'll hit enter to accept it as it is. Then control X 
to exit and we are now back into our terminal. Now, if we say ls again, you'll see that inside of this directory, we now have hello.sh listed inside of there. So it did create our shell script as we wanted it to. We run that with the sudo dot forward slash command followed by the name, which is hello.sh. Now we're going to get a permissions error when I try to run this. It's telling us that the command is not found. What does that mean exactly? Well, if we say ls dash l hello dot sh, you'll notice that even though I am the owner of this file at the moment, I only have read and write permissions against this file. I don't have any execute permissions. So we can gain full permission by saying chmod 777 followed by the file name hello.sh. If we do that and then we arrow up again and look at our list command, you'll see that now we do have execute permissions against that file. So I'm going to arrow up a couple more times and go to our original command to run this sudo dot forward slash hello dot sh i'll hit enter and we see our display as we would expect our terminal echoed back the message hello world let me show you just a quick example of the scope of some of the things that we can do with bash scripting so i'm going to create another script file let's say nano and i'm going to call this one ping dot sh this of course again opens our nano editor so let's start with our shebang, the hash and the exclamation point, our directory forward slash bin forward slash bash will create a new line and let's use some if then and else logic. We're going to create a script here in which a successful ping will display a text output telling us that the host is up. And if the ping fails, it's going to display text saying that the host is down. So we're going to start by saying if, and the command we're going to use is ping. I'm going to use one of the many optional ping parameters, which is dash C. This lets us indicate a count, or in other words, the number of times that we want to try this ping. I'm gonna set that to one, and then I'm going to put in the target IP address, 192.168, .0.1, in my case, that is my default gateway. On the next line, I'm going to say then, and I want to again use the echo function, and I want it to echo the message, this host is up. I'm gonna hit enter to create a new line, and I'm gonna use additionally an else statement, and I want that to echo, this host is down. One more new line, and on this line, I'm going to place FI. The FI statement tells the shell that we are finished, and this closes out the if statement. So again, what we're telling it here is, if we ping the host 192.168.0.1, and we get a response, then we want it to echo the host is up. Otherwise, or else, we want it to echo the host is down. Let's hit Control O to save this. We'll hit Enter, Control X to exit that. And again, let's say ls-l, the file is ping.sh. Once again, we're gonna notice we don't have execute permissions. So in addition to using this previous command, chmod777, I wanna show you another variation of that that might be helpful. We can also say chmod plus x ping.sh, we'll hit enter. I'm going to arrow up to our list command again and notice the difference in these. In our previous output, when we ran chmod777, it gave full permissions to everyone. In this case, it only added execute permissions for everyone. So it doesn't give full permission, but it a little bit more granularly provides execute permission. So that's a different option that you can use as well. So let's run this, let's say sudo dot forward slash ping dot sh and we see our message here letting us know that this host is up so it did successfully ping that host let's arrow up and go back into our nano for ping sh and let's change the ip address to an ip address that doesn't exist on this network i'm going to control o and then i'm going to control x to exit we'll execute that once more 
and it should tell us this time that the host is down. And in fact, we do see that in our terminal output. So that's a quick example of how we can create and use bash script files. Obviously you can get much more complex and add any commands inside that would be valid within your terminal, even leveraging programming logic to really create some scripts that you could potentially save tons of time with, especially for repetitive tasks. I hope you found this content useful and I wanna thank you sincerely for watching.